So the election's over, and there's still politics around. But one of these things came up with me during the politics things, and we're going to talk a little bit about, are we doing well with the short game? Are we doing well with the long game? How is veganism going to move forward? Can we ignore the short game and just focus on the long game? Let's talk. Back when the election was pending here in the United States, I was following the Onion Nights show YouTube channel. I was kind of helping support the Humane Party and Clifton Roberts, and I still feel there's some benefit to supporting there. But one of the things that the Onion Knight said in one of his videos really made me think. In the short game, we expose people to being vegan kind of on an individual level. They see that our arguments are irresistible, and then they decide for themselves if they're going to continue to just ignore that, or they're going to align their actions with their values. Vegan YouTubers, for example, are fantastic at this. Like I said in Voting Vegan Part 1, that is an excellent short game. What we've been doing is a great short game because we're creating a ton more vegans. That's not a bad thing, that's an excellent thing. And really the question remains, are we really doing good at the short game? Are we really moving things forward with the short game? Sure, now we're getting rid of or we're converting people to veganism. We have our Instagram people, and we have our Facebook groups, and we have our, our YouTube channels, and they're influencing people, and they're helping change people's lives and moving them towards veganism. But is that all the short game really is? For me personally, when I think about the short game, I think about much more than simply converting certain people over to veganism. I think about converting everyone to veganism. And while that blends into the long game a bit, I think we have to ask ourselves, are we even supporting those people that we've converted in the, during the short game sufficiently? Are we getting people to be vegan and then keeping them vegan? Are we really reaching enough of a demographic when we're trying to get people to be vegan? Do we have a message that's sufficient to really reach the widest audience that we possibly can? I don't think so. I think there's a lot of work yet to be done. I don't feel like I'm the only one that feels this way. I recently was listening to a podcast from the vegan activist and I think he feels similarly. People have fooled themselves into thinking that just because vegan cheese is now out in Sainsbury's and they're calling it Gary and just because, you know, there's a few little progresses where a couple of petitions ended up, you know, meaning a slaughterhouse was shut down. It makes them think that, oh yeah, all of a sudden everything's changing and the whole world is progressing and all these activists out there on YouTube and, you know, all these people like posting photos on Instagram, you know, of their food and all the people on, all these vloggers on YouTube who are just saying, oh yeah, you know, it's great, it's fun and happy and I'm going to Mildred's and eating food and look at me, I'm amazing and, uh, and I lost 20 pounds by being on a vegan diet. All these people, you know, as much as what they're doing is valuable, we've tricked ourselves and we've deluded ourselves into thinking that what they've done and what they're doing is enough. So what do we do? Does that mean we just stop what we're doing? Throw everything away? I don't think that's what happens either. I think what it is is that we just need to all be cognizant and recognize that simply having a Facebook group or simply having a popular Instagram channel, or even having regular videos or videos that regularly help bring people to veganism. That's not enough. There's more that we can do. And there's more people we can touch. If you just go to a small town or even a big city and go into some of the poorer neighborhoods, you can see 
what isn't being reached. And it's not just about being poor. You go into the rural areas and you see these rural areas where the only reason why there's a vegan protein option in that town is because either there's a co-op there and they happen to have a vegan on their board of directors or there's a big chain that carries plant-based protein as part of their standard build-out. But you're not going to find vegan options at local stores or local restaurants. And if you bring up veganism or looking for vegan options at any of these places, they're going to look at you like you're crazy. How do we get that to change? How do we get more support for vegans? It's going to take time and it's going to take work. And the first part of that is recognizing that this is work that needs to be done.